Good evening. My name is Bradford McIntyre, and on behalf of AIDS Vancouver and sponsoring organizations, welcome to the 30th Vancouver International AIDS Candlelight Memorial. In solidarity, a musical tribute to people at infected or affected and those who have been lost to AIDS. Here with me for American Sign Language Interpretation is Louis Green. I would like to extend a warm welcome to any of you who are here for your first time. First, we would like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded Coast Salish territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations, and for that we are very grateful. We are privileged to have Chief Bill Williams perform a blessing again this year. Chief Bill Williams has been an elected representative of the Squamish Nation Council since 1980 and in 1995. He became one of the 16 hereditary chiefs of the Squamish Nation. Chief Bill Williams has many significant accomplishments and awards, but it is his dedication and perspective that comes from his understanding of the importance of passing on knowledge of cultural and spiritual values in his work and his everyday life that sets him apart. Please welcome Chief Bill Williams. The last one came is my ancestral name. Siamp is a designation given to me by my family recon that, that recognizes me to be in front of the family or a person whom you talk to when you want to talk to the family. The Indian Act has described my position as chief. I am one of 16 hereditary chiefs of the Squamish Nation. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for putting aside some time to be able to look at the good things in life. The good things in life is family, friends, sharing, sharing the good things in, from your heart and from your mind. We'd like to thank the Creator for giving this ability to, to have this sharing of, of the goodness. We'd like to thank the Creator for putting your heart and mind to think about the people that are not here today, but maybe at home and in the hospitals. So, so they can realize that they are not alone, so they can realize that they in fact, uh, there is in fact love for them. And, and you are sharing that love, each and every one of you. We'd like to thank the Creator for, for putting aside the, the time of day for us to be able to come together and do the good things that we need to do, just like this evening. Have each and every one of you have a safe journey, and on that journey, you, you share the goodness that you have. Hoichika. Spakwa Slola, which means eagle song, is a dance group of the Squamish nation who presents songs and dance. The group does presentations of every kind, <clears throat> including opening ceremonies and dance presentations for conventions, conferences, cultural festivals, school presentations, wedding ceremonies, and blessing ceremonies. Ongoing performances are projects continuing throughout the Lower Mainland, Vancouver, Squam Squamish Whistler, and Vancouver Island. Please welcome the Eagle Song Dancers. Yeah.
is my ancestral name and I come with the Squamish people. Colossum KNCM, as he mentioned, is one of our chiefs that I'm very honored to travel with on this beautiful day. So Aplak CM, my brother, my co pate is the one that leads our group here today. I'm very honored to announce that we are Eagle Song Dancers of the Squamish Nation. That first song that we came in with the, is a <coughs> Sorry, a canoe song. It identifies who we are as we travel upon these waters. Sometimes you may be able to hear those songs sung still to this day on these waters as we travel forward, making our journey forward in life, taking day by day, one step at a time or one paddle at a time. I didn't quite say all of that in the Stomo language, so we'll let her go with that. <laughs> At this time, we'd like to share a song in honor of our chiefs, in honor of our elders and our ancestors, the ones that handed all the good teachings down to our people to share. This is known as Hope Hope Day. Hope Hope Day is a sweet country song to identify our people back in 1906 when three chiefs of BC made their journey across these great waters to that other land to announce who we were and that we are still here. So we use this song today to say we are all still here together as one. In Chopo, one heart, one mind. So in honor of that chiefly spirit within each and every one of us, we call it Siam. Siam is the word that was used for chief in our day. Oh, Siam and Siam, Hoicha, Quat Siam, Hoicha, Pahakakanak, Shay Siam. Hope, hope, Slolam, Siam and Siam. Did you get that? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs>
Dancy. I'd like to tell, take this time to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been living with HIV. Uh, currently, I'm in my third year as vice chair on the board of directors of AIDS Vancouver <clears throat> that was established in 1983. For nearly 20 years, I've been an advocate and activist for creating HIV and AIDS awareness through all venues, events, media, conferences, seminars, documentaries, and speaking engagements. I am the founder and operator of the <coughs> HIV AIDS information resource website, Positively Positive, Living with HIV AIDS, since 2003. As a longtime survivor, living with HIV for 29 years, it is my great honor to be here this evening for this memorial. I feel very fortunate to be here. I was 32 years old when I was diagnosed with HIV. The following year, I was told to go home and inform my family, arrange my finances and funeral, that I had six months to live. Over the years, I was given a death sentence repeatedly. In 1990, I was crippled with neuropathy, a deterioration of the nervous system in my legs, a side effect of AZT, and I nearly died. No longer able to stand and work as a hairstylist, I left a successful career behind me. In 1994, a decade after being diagnosed, I announced publicly on national television on the Dini Petty Show, World AIDS Day, that I was living with HIV. In 1997, I developed PCP pneumonia and nearly died. And I would have died if it hadn't been for the antiretroviral drugs that had come on in 1996. They saved my life. <clears throat> my face was reconstructed in 2004 due to facial wasting, lipoatrophy, and side effects of the medications. Over the years, I continue to fight illness and diseases, but currently my CD4 count is 990, and my viral load has been undetectable since 1997. My Thank you. My partner, Denny, and I met in 2000, and we were married at St. John's United Church in 2001, before legal marriages for same-sex couples had been, <coughs> went into effect in Canada. In 2011, on our 10th wedding anniversary, we were married legally. Denny is not HIV positive, and with an undetectable viral load, I am not able to infect. However, I am still faced with chronic health conditions and new diseases caused by both the side effects of the medications and aging. At 61 years of age, half of my life has been affected by HIV and AIDS. In the 30 years since the first case of HIV, over 60 million people have been infected worldwide. There are currently 34 million people infected and over 30 million people have died of AIDS. Every year, 1.8 million people die of AIDS-related diseases and 2.7 million new people become infected. Worldwide, 50% of all HIV infections are women. Annually, at least 390,000 children are born with HIV and 3.3 million people under the age of 15 have the disease and it is estimated that 16 million children have been orphaned to AIDS. 5 million people in the 15 to 30 year age group are infected. 
over <coughs> what, sorry, one fourth of individuals infected with HIV are not aware that they have been in, they have the disease. Each hour, 300 people around the world contract HIV. Treatment is prevention, but millions do not have access. Here in Canada, there are an estimated 78,000 infections. 